So I've been meaning to do this video for a little bit and I've been teasing it. Um, done all the research now, so let's jump in. We're gonna go through every single team that has a playoff drought currently, a drought being uh, more than one year, where they haven't made it into the postseason and we're gonna see if they're gonna, if my thoughts, are they gonna be able to get into this year's postseason? So let's jump in. Let's start with the Buffalo Sabres. I think they're a good safe bet to start off with. I wanna preference this video. If they did not get to the final eight uh, for their conference last year, so they didn't win that wild card round to get in. Haven't made the playoffs. That's what I'm saying. Playoffs, not postseason playoffs. I, I want them to be into that for for them to be on that list. So looking at teams like Florida. Um, but yeah, let's start with the Buffalo Sabres. So doing a bit of research for this video, I came across something really weird in the last two years with the Sabres. Apparently, they're great at home. Last year they won 21 and 21 games and lost 10. Rest were in overtime. Um, but away they were terrible. They won 10 games. Uh, the year before that they won 14. I think the year before that they won 12. I don't know why this team travels like seafood without a refrigeration unit, but they really seem to travel poorly. Um, I think a lot of that is I was looking at a lot of the starts and Allmark wasn't getting those starts um, and he seems to be a big deal for this team. When he got injured, they they, they did definitely um, lose an edge last year. So I actually think a lot of that ends with him here. Um, they've made some really interesting signings um, during the offseason. They're able to retain most of their talent. They're, of course, they're able to get Hall, um, bring in Stahl, uh, you know, sign up all their other guys, make a few other smaller signings. Cody Eakin comes in as well. Um, so... They've definitely bolstered up their offense. Um, their defense is still, I mean, it's missing something. It's missing a je ne sais quoi. Um, if Ristolainen took that next step, which I don't think he's capable of, um, that would be it. But I have a feeling this team is going to live and die by Linus, Linus Olmark. I really do. I think that this is where this team hits home. If they're going to make the playoffs, they need him to take the ball and run with it. They're still going to be an incredibly streaky team. It's been something that's been with them for a while now. And I'm noticing a lot of those streaks, uh, they can win a fair bit when they're at home. And then when they go on a road trip, they just get trucked. They, their record against the West is quite poor, um, especially away. And I just don't know why they, they're not winning games away. Like, I, it just it, there's no logical reason why you can't win games away. And this is one of the few teams that really has, a, a, a pro, I think, the worst record away right now. Um, I know the Oilers had a bit of a bad run before, um, with getting everything going while they're away from home, but, oh boy, yeah, like they just, it's like everything's just worse, like they just let in an extra goal and they can't score a goal when they're away, and I, I don't know why, it, it doesn't make too much sense, these are professional athletes, they should be able to deal with the fact that the, you know, the people in the stands aren't, aren't going yay. So yeah, so we'll see what this team does to overcome their shortfalls, uh, this season. Do I think... They can make the playoffs. I, I I don't think that they're out of the list of all of these teams. And there's nine of them total that are currently in a playoff drought right now. I wouldn't put them as the highest that I would give to be able to get in. However, I, I, I do think they can get in. But they'll need some teams to... They would not only have to be good. They would need some teams that are currently in the dance to, to really drop off. I just can't see that happening with a lot of the teams that are above them. A lot of the teams around them got better. Um, the East is a really stacked conference. Like, you, you look through and there's not many teams that got worse last season. So those games are going to be really hard. So if they are going to get in, they're really going to earn it. But I, I just can't see them squeaking in. I'm really sorry, Sabres fans, but I think you might get teased a little bit this year. It's been a while since you've even been teased the fact that they, they might get into the postseason. I just think they lack a few pieces, um, especially that bottom six to be able to really um, lay the physical body down. And, and I know that's needed at some points. And yeah, it's just not going to work out, I don't think. The Detroit Red Wings. Got the How jersey on. How, oh, how do they make it back into the playoffs? Um, well, look, it's not unsurprising that they're not there, right? They, they made it for so many years in a row. I think it was like 21. Uh, and eventually the bill came. The, and they're just going to need to pay it. I think they're making really good steps going forward to build a team that in a few years will be able to compete again to get into the playoffs. And, and not just half assedly get in. Like, I think they can actually do 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 some good things once they get in there. Um, they've done very well with their picks. They've been able to amass a few extra seconds and a few thirds and, and whatnot, just taking contracts like Mark Stahl on. And, and, you know, they might be able to even eat some salary and trade him away at the um, at the deadline if a team's desperate. Stetcher was a 
really good deal, bringing in Bobby Ryan and a one-year deal is really good. Um, and they signed all of their youngsters. Um, and they've got a lot of their youngsters signed as well. So, you know, they're, they're, they've definitely got some pieces here. Bernier and, and Grice are the goalies. So two years at uh, 3.6 for Grice. Again, if, if someone gets injured and really without a goalie at the dance, they might be able to move him, uh, if not this year, next year. So they've really amassed some pieces that you need to do in a rebuild on one to two year contracts that they can trade away. Or if they don't work out, I mean, this club's not poor, so they can kind of be like, yeah, well, you know. Um, are they making the playoffs? No. I give this team like a 0% a, a chance. 0% chance. I, I didn't give the Buffalo Sabres a, a percentage. It's like 40%. No, 35% chance that Buffalo Sabres can get in. 0% for this team. I'll give it 1% just to in case, and that way I'm like, well, I did say 1%, um, but no, they just do not have a great team. But their rebuild is on a really good path, so I don't think you want to make the playoffs this year um, unless it happened by fluke. You don't want to amass assets and, and trade away youth to be able to get in. You want them to be doing this. Sorry, Red Wings fans, but that's just the way it is. Florida Panthers that are currently on a four-year drought. Again, we're not including that first play-in round. The play-in round doesn't count. It's to get to the 16. Um, that's the proviso I'm doing. I don't want people in the comments being like, well, technically, that's the thing that I'm saying. They haven't got into that yet. So, yeah. So, let's run through what I think about this team. Well, uh, the last time they were in the postseason, Tavares scored that wraparound goal in Game 7 and over time to get them to the next round. Um, boy, like, I was like, wow, it's really been that long, eh? Um, since they were in, because that, that goal definitely happened a few years ago, especially when you start to go, oh, Tavares was an Islander. Um, you remember that? Remember that, Islanders fans? Ah, you had a good season. There's no need to be better. Um, so what did they do in this year's off-season? Well, they struggled again, um, and they picked up an aging Hornquist who you ain't getting 82 games out of, and in a truncated schedule, you are definitely... He's missing a lot of time. Sorry, everyone. Um, but when he's healthy, he adds a lot to the team. They also put it got Radko Gudis, um, which is a big help on a, on a pretty good deal. This team really has struggled in the last few years because they've been signing big free agents um, at the deadline, um, and it hasn't worked out. It just none of them really have worked out. And they have a history of, like, bringing in the big fish, Brian Campbell, Keith Yandel, um, a lot of Andals. Um, and it just it's just not working out. So, yeah, Bobrovsky, a, a prime example, though, the last um, one at free agency that they got that just did not work out. So, can they make it to the postseason? I don't know. This one's really tough. They they have the forward line capability, too. Like, they, you look at this forward line, it's like Hubert Albarkoff, um, Vitrano, Wenberg, uh, you know, Hintrosa, the, there's some real good talented names on this list. Um, but they've also got rid of a few over the last few years that they could really need to bolster up that forward line. However, that, that's a forward line capable of scoring enough goals to get you in. The defense, but like, what are you? Ekblad, Yandel, Strawman. Um, Gudas, um, Navara, uh, it, it's just Stillman, like, it's just, I don't like the speed factor on it. Um, even though Ekblad's quite young, he's not a super speedy defenseman. I feel like they need a small speedy defenseman somewhere in amongst that. Otherwise, I think that's quite a good blue line. But this team is going to go far as Bobrovsky will take them. Uh, and that's that's where it is. He was so bad last year. Really, really bad. And we might just look back and say that's an off year. However, if he doesn't get it together, Chris Drager is not the player. <laughs> it is not taking the reins here. They've got $10.10 $10 million locked up with this goalie for another, what, six years. He's, he has to figure this out. He's got to figure this out now. So, um, very interesting to see what how this is going to go. Uh, yeah, I know it's a lot to say that, you know, it rests on a goalie, but they definitely have the talent to get in there. But if, if Bobrovsky is even anywhere near as bad as he was last season, they aren't getting anywhere near this postseason because they just won't be consistent enough. And the defense is not good enough to cover it. And their offensive enough is not good enough to score enough goals to, to mask it. Unfortunately, it comes down to one position for this team. I think... Uh, I can't remember who it was, but there's a saying that, like, a goalie is 60, you know... It, it, it's 60% of the solution when it goes well and 100% of the problem when it's going bad. And right now, it's 100% a problem for this team. Edmonton Oilers currently on a three-year um, gap right now um, from the postseason with 
the best player in the league and arguably someone that's probably in the top five best players in the league, or at least definitely top ten, um, in Leon Dreisaitl. So can they get back there this year? Um, well, this team is another one of those teams that probably thought they were in. They got too excited with the McDavid thing and thought they were in when they weren't. So they got deals like Lucic and a few others to be able to bolster up the team so they can get into the playoffs and have big runs. And, and now it's James Neal um, after the trade. And it's just six million that sits on the books. And, and yeah, like he's been able to score a little bit, but he doesn't drive play, he doesn't do anything. He doesn't do enough to justify nearly six million dollars in, in salary. Um, what were they able to bring in during the offseason? Uh, probably the big name was Carl Turris. Uh, Jesse Pugliavi is going to come back, which is really good. Tyner Ennis is going up again. And Dominic Cajon, um, who hasn't really worked out yet, but might be something of a hand... Like, it's only upside for him on a team like this. It's a really good signing by them, especially with the, the amount that they um, they signed him for. Yamamoto yeah, took really good steps in the season, um, especially seeing that a lot of players his height actually regressed a lot last season. I don't know why. They just... They were down pretty much uh, a goal every third game, and no idea why. I just... <laughs> I remember I was like, should I make a video on this? And I was like, I don't know the reason why, but so I couldn't really make a video on it. But um, yeah, he was he was the one uh, from memory from if I brought up the spreadsheet, he was the only one that was like below five foot eight that actually like increased in scoring and was consistent. Um, defensive wise, they were able to bring in Tyson Berry, which is you know pretty handy. I think he'll actually work out pretty well on this team, and it's on a one year deal. So if he doesn't, no harm, no foul. Get to the problem. Ah, uh, the goaltending. The goaltending. Mikko Koskinen and Mike Smith. Look, Mikko Koskinen wasn't terrible last year. Um, he was actually pretty good. I think he was like 9-17, 9-16 from memory. I've just got all these stats in my brain right now. He couldn't win games. At least the ones that I watched the Oilers, he wasn't winning games for this team. And that's who they need. They need someone that can steal a couple of points so they can get into the playoffs. However, this is the team I, I give the best percentage to be able to get in. I think a few of the West teams have regressed a little bit um, in the players have gone over East or they haven't been too savvy or they're just not exactly sure where they are. I think this is a wild card team that, that can squeak in. Um, so this team I give like about a 65% chance to break the drought this year. I, I think it's I think it's these guys that are going to be able to do it. So it's Ottawa Senators. I uh, had a very good little off season this team, but... Um, when it comes to breaking that three-year playoff drought, probably soon to be four, if it's time to foreshadow my prediction. Um, yeah, I don't think they're going to be in the playoffs. You just look at this blue line. Uh, Shabbat is a really, really good player. Like, unbelievable. Uh, has a really good offensive mind and a really good defensive IQ as well. Um, when it comes to breaking up plays. But then you've got, like, Zaitsev, Gabranson, and then a whole lot of... Mm, um, in front of Matt Murray, which is, again, a really good pickup from this team. But what Matt Murray are you getting? Um, look, you know, he's a goalie that, that won two Stanley Cups. And I will always, as a Penguin fan, have a soft spot for him. But he isn't a goalie that's going to win a lot of games. He can be an above-average goalie with a good team in front of him to go a very long distance and not be a liability. But he's not going to stand on his head and win... Games upon games upon games, which is the only way that this team would be able to make the playoffs. They uh, made some pretty good signings as well. Dadnoff will really add to their scoring. Sutzler um, come, will probably start in this team, you would think, although his development will be hampered with obviously that broken arm. Um, but yeah, everything else... Good pieces, but not enough. Remember when California was just the powerhouse and like you, you you see that away trip and you're like, oh God, if the team can even just go 500 there and we're looking good. Boy, how times have changed, eh? Uh, Two-year drought for the Anaheim Little Duckies. Uh, so, yeah, what did they do in the off-season? Well, they signed Shattenkirk and boasted up the defensive roster. And John Gibson um, is still probably one of the best goalies in the league, even though he had a bit of a up and down year last year. I think that's the delicate way of putting it. Um, I still think there's an absolute superstar, a talent uh, there that any team would be lucky to have. However, the Ford line is <laughs> Sam Steele. Um, hopefully, can sort of take that next step um, in his development, but it's just there's a lot going on there. David Backus, Gatslav. Uh, on Rig Silverberg, like Silverberg's 30 years old now. Let that sink in for a second. 
Silverberg is 30. Man, where's the time go? Yeah, there's not enough goals in this forward line to get them there. I, I'll i give them like a, I don't know, a 15% chance they can make it because it, it isn't the greatest division in the world just because of, well, of obviously all the California teams. Um, and their defense and goaltending can win games. So if they can eke out a lot of 2-1 wins and Gibson can be probably the best goalie in the league, they can make the playoffs. Uh, but, yeah, I am not giving a huge percentage here. LA! Oh, boy. Well, they've got Ole Marta now, so, I mean, I've got to be rooting for them at some point. And they uh, drafted very well with Byfield. But, oh, man, is this team just... It, they took their first step to a successful rebuild uh, this offseason, I feel. Uh, but without Trafoli, they, they lose a lot of scoring. And, like, this team is really starting to get old. Drew Doughty, even though he's still put in the top 20 defensive list, is not that defender anymore. He's not a bum, but, yeah, I mean, they've got 11 mil for the next six years still in the books. Seven years, sorry. Uh, still in the books with him, so that's going to hurt. Um, Brown's still a part of this lineup. Jeff Carter's still a part of this lineup. Kopitar is starting to take a step back and, you know, got 10 more years there. So it's just the next few years are just going to suck for the Kings. I, I think they've taken their, their, their first strides into being successful. But I actually, it, unless Jonathan Quick can really stay on his head, you might be looking at last. I know, I know it's a bit of a crazy statement, but you just look at this defense. It's just so... Yeah, and, and Quick took a step back and the team forward line is slower and I just feel like as every team around them kind of improved and don't get me wrong, they're on the right path they, they, you know, sucking's not the worst thing that this team can do right now they've, they're in cap hell when it comes to the, some of the contracts that are on this books so yeah, they've just got to deal with what they've got so I give this team a 0% chance of making the playoffs which is crazy with some of the names that they have but yeah, I honestly think that they, they have a worse chance than the Red Wings which is pretty crazy. New Jersey Devils, currently two years since they made the postseason, thanks to that MVP season from Taylor Hall. Um, ever since then, haven't been able to hit the promised land. And uh, yeah, they were, they were able to bring in Corey Crawford, better than Schneider, I guess. Uh, this team is... Uh, unless some of these young superstars, which I, I just don't think they're ready yet, in Hughes and Heesha, to, to sort of take that... Next stride, you look at the rest of the team around them, and oh, it's not good. It really is not good. Uh, I like the inclusion of Ryan Murray. I think this helps the blue line a little bit. Severson's pretty good. Will Butcher, unfortunately, took a step back last year, and P.K. Subban just hasn't had it for the last few years. There's not enough scoring. There's not enough scoring. It's just bad all round, to be honest. It, it, and again, this is another team that is slowly getting there. I, I, you know, I like the fact that Ty Smith's progressing quite, you know, quite well in the rafters. Um, they didn't do terribly in this year's draft. Uh, yeah, picking up Holtz and Mercer, I think are going to be bona fide, uh, at least good players in this league. If not, one of them might be like that next run down below the star level. And then the Russian guy who I'm not even going to pretend to pronounce that last name. So the rebuild's definitely coming along, especially with Hughes and Hesha, but they're not there yet. Like they're and and Smith as well. Um, but they, I, I this team's probably last for me. If it was like who I who do I think will be last? I think it'll be this team. Uh, another reason for it is you might say, well, how about Corey Crawford? He's had a lot of injury concerns, and Blackwood is still show me what you got. He hasn't quite got there yet, even though I, I do think there's a starter there down the road. I, I just don't think that this team has what it takes. They, they're they unlucky that they couldn't get uh, a good position in the draft, but I think the way it ended up and the trades that they made were, with talent, um, they were able to do pretty well. And, you know, I think you should look to see them do something similar during this season. Zajax on his last deal, I wonder if that if they're willing to take some cap, yeah, at five million, he's not the best player in the world. But if someone needs to, you know, has some injuries and in going into the playoffs, and they can eat some of that salary, I think a team will take a punt on that and, and give them a second round pick. Um, and they've got a few more picks up their sleeve, so it's just, it's about they're just not there. They're just this isn't the exciting thing for them to try um, to try make it. Um, but they've they've taken good strides uh, for the future, and um, yeah, still a few more to go, but. They're at least in the conversation of like, you know, that you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. And that whole year kind of took the edge off, right? Right, Devils fans? Like, it's just like enough to be like, okay, so it's not like six years of failure or five years of failure. It's, you know, we had that one good year and now the rebuild's starting and, you know, you're starting to 
starting to see to the future. I actually think the future is pretty bright for this team. But I give them a 0% chance of making the playoffs, so... Mm, sorry. Sorry, guys. Mini! Minnesota! Minnesota Wild. Uh, Billy Garen. Billy Garen mixing it up. He's, he's, he's trying. He's trying some things. Um, after getting Zuccarello, they've now brought in Benino. Um, Felino from um, from Buffalo as well. So this team, uh, Nick Bustad's another one that they've got pretty well on the cheap as well. So they've bolstered some of their bottom line scoring. I was I really liked um, Eric Sinek in the in the playoffs um, when they just couldn't get past uh, Little Vancouver at the start there. Um, so yeah, I mean that's the way it goes sometimes. Uh, their defense, uh, I mean, Dumba, who everyone kind of thought was going to be a bona fide superstar last year, just didn't take that step. So really hoping that he can um, he can sort of be that player that he should be. Um, it's And goaltending, they definitely made better. Dubnik was a real problem with his team. And, um, yeah, Talbot obviously going in. So they're on a, a two-year drought right now um, because, again... I explained it in the last the, the last few teams. Um, I, I I this is a, the best chance that they of a team that ends their drought. I actually think this is a playoff team. I, I I would still like them to rebuild a little bit more, and they might get that choice because uh, that penguin pick is not a lottery protected. So if either if either them don't make the playoffs or the penguins don't make the playoffs, they've got uh, two bites of the cherry there. So. Um, yeah, otherwise, you know, I think this draft will be okay. It's a little bit hard to judge right now because half the leagues aren't playing. Um, but we'll see how it goes. But yeah, really good um, really good picks. And uh, yeah, I, I, I give this team like a good like seven. If Talbot can be that starter, um, I give him like a 70% chance of, of breaking the hoodoo. And that's it. That's, that's the video. That's your lot. Um, so yeah, we went through all the teams that are currently in the middle of a playoff drought. And the playoffs, I'm not going to explain it again. You guys figure it out. Anyway, guys, if you did like this video, hit the like button. Otherwise, hit subscribe if you made it all this way and you haven't subscribed. I'll put a fair bit of work into this one. Um, so, yeah, just let me know. Otherwise, comment down below which team do you think will uh, beat the streak um, compared to all the others. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. See you.